Did you murder someone that night, Jerry? Test the DNA. Jerry. Test the DNA. Why did this happen, Jerry? Test what, the DNA. What happened? The um, scenario that has been developed uh, by the prosecution in this case is that Jerry Burns, on December 19, 1979, drove from either Manchester, Iowa, or Al-Qaeda, Iowa, to the Westdale Mall, that he was bent on the destruction of Michelle Martinko. Not only was he bent on her destruction, he had planned to have rubber gloves and a knife to inflict the fatal wounds that killed Michelle Martinko. Michelle Martinko was loved by her classmates. She was musically talented and very involved in her school's choir program. On December 19, 1979, Michelle went to the newly built Westdale Mall. Unfortunately, Michelle would not make it home that night curled into the passenger side seat floorboard, stabbed multiple times, and bloody from the wounds that she sustained. Because of the nature of the attack, police believed that the killing was personal, and Michelle knew her attacker. That would not be true. We, for the longest time, and we do feel sorry for this now, we thought it was one of the boyfriends. But when it, he was ruled out, then um, all bets were off. For years, Cedar Rapids police struggled to find leads on Michelle's killer. We had no idea who it could be. And, and my thesis ended up being that it was an over-the-road trucker or somebody. It would take Cedar Rapids police 40 years to solve Michelle Martinko's case. In the meantime, DNA technology was growing. In 2006, the dress that Michelle was wearing was retested for DNA. Investigators found a spot of blood on the dress that did not match the DNA of Michelle Martinko. It was the DNA of a man. The police had a partial DNA profile, so they searched public DNA databases and found the family of the killer. Cedar Rapids police were able to narrow it down to three suspects, including Jerry Lynn Burns. In 1979, Jerry Burns was 25 years old. He was living in the town he grew up in, Manchester, Iowa, with his wife and two kids. In October 2018, police tracked down Burns at a pizza ranch, and they picked up a straw that he had used and tested the DNA on it. This was the match they were looking for. There's nothing that's more powerful, more convincing, and more reliable than DNA evidence. Um, the uh, odds that we were dealing with here, um, you know, one in 100 billion, I think was the number that came out, uh, which actually was more than 100 billion. Um, you know, as, as far as identifying Mr. Burns, eliminates essentially all of the world population except for Mr. Burns being the product or being the source of that DNA that was found um, on Michelle's dress and in the vehicle. Jerry, so the reality is we have your DNA at the crime scene, and so we know you were there that night this happened. During your interaction with Mr. Burns, did you see some uh, noticeable scars to his hands or to his arms? Yeah, he had he had a bunch of scars on his hands and arms. Do you know what today is? 19th of December. Did you murder someone that night, Jerry? Test the DNA. Jerry. Test the DNA. Why did this happen, Jerry? Test what, the DNA. What happened? I don't know. You I was don't... not there that night. You don't know why this happened? I was not there that night. Folks, that's a yes or no. Did you murder someone that night? Test the DNA. We also know from uh, Andy Seidel, Michelle's former boyfriend, that about four days before her death, she had expressed to him her fear and her concern about a grotesque or an ugly man who had been stalking her at her job at another mall. You and other investigators wanted to solve this, didn't you? I did. So if somebody confessed to the killing of Michelle Martinko and you could prove it, would you have made an arrest? Definitely. His attorney reached out to us um, and we met with Mr. Allison and he talked about some of his conversations with Mr. Burns. He had told me if I keep beating him in Pinochle, he was gonna have to take me to the mall. Yeah, he feels like uh, no matter what happens, in this case that he, he wins because he had, had the opportunity to be out there with his family all these years. But Mr. Allison was speaking about the regrets that he had in his life 
To that, the defendant would tell Mr. Allison that his only regret or his regret he had was not cleaning up his mess. Not regret for killing a young girl, regret for not cleaning up his mess. It didn't take long for the jury to come back with the verdict. We, the jury, find the defendant, Jerry Lynn Burns, guilty of the charge of murder in the first degree, dated this 24th day of February, 2020. They didn't ask for this. If they're good people, they're going to have to mend their lives as we have, as we have mended ours. And it's just the natural consequence of what Jerry Burns did, not only to himself and our family, but to his own family. At his sentencing, this is what Jerry Burns had to say. First of all, I'd like to say that somebody else stabbed Michelle to death in that car that night. I don't know who, I don't know why. But I would like to thank my family and friends for their support. Thank you. Burns was sentenced to life in prison without parole. He's in the appeals process and maintains his innocence. But there's always gonna be an appeal. But in the end, I, I feel confident that our verdict will stand.